if I worry about it hitting my, me in the face, I need to wear a face shield, and this could uh, this is not as secure as a typical spindle. Hey, all welcome to my shop. Today we're going to turn some uh, napkin rings. My wife didn't have any, and I thought, well, you know, it's about time I made some. It's a great little project. It gives you a chance to design lots of different uh, uh, styles and doesn't take a lot of wood. Uh, blanks about two and a quarter inches if you're going to drill it one and three eighths. Maybe two and a half inches uh, square before you knock the corners off if you're going to drill it about an inch and a half. Uh, I'm not sure which is the best size yet, but I, my Forstner bit was one and three eighths, so that's the size that I that I made it. Um, if you don't have, if you're a novice turner and you don't have a scroll chuck yet, this project's right up your alley because we're going to make this simple uh, collet chuck. I use a threaded glue block, but you could put it on a faceplate just as just as well, and this will hold these real well. So let me show you. So step one in uh, making this collet chuck is to use a faceplate, or in this case, a threaded glue block with a piece of. Uh, side grain wood on it that I flattened out and, and tested. I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole now uh, that, that I'm going to put a tenon on that back of that collet. Slow it down to oh maybe maybe 600 one inch hole. It size of the hole is not real real particular. Now for the collet chuck portion, I've got a blank about two inches uh, square, could be as small as one and three quarters. Uh, I'm going to rough it round and then put a one inch tenon on it to fit in that glue block that I just showed you. So let's get that out of the way. I just marked it between centers, get the speed up a little bit. It's safely between the centers, it's not going anywhere. Let's just go ahead and put that tenon on there. I'm just going to come raise it up a little bit. I don't want a ragged edge, so I'm going to go straight in until and, until it penetrates the wood. Then I'm going to drop the handle. Now to size that. I'm just using a little, little template. I don't want to do it while it's turning or it'll uh, burn it up or melt it down. Or... Okay. Now let's test that. So we're going to take the blank that we, we drilled with a one inch hole and just make sure we got a, a pretty snug fit. And that looks pretty good. Maybe it's just a little bit tight in the back. So let's just refine that just a bit and we'll be ready. So I can I can see it. It's just tapered down just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna come in from the beginning, take a light cut and just cut it toward the back. Okay. Yep, that'll work. Nice snug, snug fit. Uh, so let's go ahead and put a little glue on that and glue that up. I think similar to last time, I will use the tailstock. Keep it, uh, keep it in place while it's drying. Okay, bring that up. All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the edge and pop it in in place. All right, rush back here. Put this in place, get it on there before it dries. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish roughing this down. Our, the outside of this is going to match a 1 and 3 8 inch drill bit we're going to use for the uh, rings themselves. I've got this little, uh, I've got this little arc uh, gauge for 1 and 3 8 I know this is 1 and 5 8 so I'm going to roughly gauge the dimension against this and then we'll start looking at fine tuning it.
drill bit because that's what I've got. And that'll leave the walls uh, fairly thin and give it a little bit of flex. Alright. Now we're going to just measure about how far down we want to go. We want to go down to about about there, put on a little piece of tape. Slow it down to about 500. Ease in. Okay. Now I'm going to just take a tiny chamfer off here and just a tiny chamfer on the inside. I'm going to use a half inch spindle gouge for that, cutting it about like that, just lightly, maybe a little more speed. I'm facing probably 10 o'clock, 10.30. Just want a rounded surface where the cone that puts tension on it is going to be. And now we're just going to chamfer the end of this. I'm just going to do that with this parting tool. Just make it a little easier to slide the ring on it. That's all it's doing. Okay. Now we're ready to take this over to the bandsaw and uh, we're going to saw four slots in it about that far down, which is, I'm not really measuring, I'm just kind of sort of guesstimating, but it's, looks like it's two and a half inches. So we're gonna cut it down to two and a half Okay, inches. I'm gonna cut a couple of slots here on the bandsaw. Uh, I don't wanna lift it up like this because I'm afraid it'll get jerked down and I'll lose control of it. So I'm gonna uh, keep this up against the fence and I've got it where it's just about centered and I've got it marked on the top, Make a minor adjustment. And then I'll leave it slanted. Use this to guide it and we'll bring it down to that line. Turning them from uh, rounded blanks is a little bit easier, especially on a mini, mini lathe, but it's not worth giving it too much thought or effort. Uh, squares will turn around quick enough. Okay, now we're simply going to take one of our uh, roughed out rings, slide it over, twist it into place, get it uh, parallel, bring up our tailstock with our 60 degree cone to give it some support. And it also opens this up and tightens it to give it a really tight, tight, secure fit. Bring up our tool rest. All right, I'm gonna use a small, because this is a, a parallel grain similar to a bowl, 
We're not going to use a spindle roughing gouge. I'm going to use a small bowl gouge and first get it round. We can get the speed up a little bit. It's not going to go anywhere, don't think. That said, I think I'm going to switch to a face mask just in case. My rule of thumb is if I worry about it hitting my, me in the face, I need to wear a face shield and this could uh, this is not as secure as a typical spindle. Okay, I've, I've got it round. Now it's time to think about design considerations. What do I want this thing to look like? And I think what I'm going to do is make several of them, although I can see from the side this is over a half inch thick on each side, so it's pretty thick no matter what kind of design. So I'm going to take it down, oh, at least another, probably close to a, a quarter of an inch. And then uh, I think what I'm going to do is make different kinds of uh, rings to show you some of the different kind of styles. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to make a cove in the middle. Now, unlike a uh, cove with the parallel grain going the direction of the lathe where you go from small to large the way I was cutting it's time for me to switch now to get the best cut which is going to be going from small to large because the grain is running this way and changing whatever whatever revolution Generally I want to leave about a quarter of an inch wall thickness, at least in, in parts of it, but based on your design you could take it down a little bit more like I'm going to do in this case. And I think, uh, I think I like the looks of it. Now, the beauty of this type of project is you can make lots of different designs and you can play with them and come up with all types of things. And at this point in time I'm going to go ahead and sand this a little bit. Um, and then we'll do the next one. Now for a spindle sander, I simply uh, did one of my Morse, wooden Morse tapers, cut a slot down the middle, rolled a piece of paper around it, and tucked it in on both sides, and that seems to work just fine. Just slide this on, do it at slow speed, and you can clean up the inside real easy using this. And then Buff it, put on your finish of choice. I like antique oil, so that's probably what I'll put on all of these. There's lots of design opportunities. Sometimes it helps to sketch some of them out on a, on a piece of paper. Um, this one I'm going to make a, a bead in the middle and a bead on each side. Cove down. And kind of mark it. And use a half inch gouge. Now I cove into that middle bead. Now I'm just going to flip these corners. Come on from the other side. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a detail gouge. That is one with a shallower flute and it's a little pointier and I'm just going to round this over. And then I'm going to just clip it out a little bit to make what they call a fillet. Actually, I think it might be easier for me to make a fillet with a tenoning uh, tool or a small parting tool. I'm going to take this small parting tool and just come in and put a flat on each side of the feed. Like that. Get them even. Now I'll come in and finish rounding it off. Just kind of a variation. And 
think I like that. I'll sand it up and got another one done. Yeah.